As of January 24th, 20, 2024, um, Mr. Doan has been on medical <coughs> leave. This was the time where he first, where we first received the uh, document, the letter from his lawyer indicating that um, he was on this medical leave and public servants can take a maximum of 27 unpaid sick weeks, uh, but this time is coming to a close. Um, I think that this committee has shown Mr. Doan a, a uh, significant amount of, of compassion and has been respectful of, of his needs and of this time he has needed to, uh, to heal, to reflect upon the case at hand, but the reality is that he is significantly implicated within the Arrive scam scandal. First of all, of course, from the point of incompetence, whereby he was uh, simply unable to explain to this group why he was so unaware as to the lack of project management, the lack of documentation, and of course, the, the question that has plagued this committee, who chose GC strategies. So this is just an incredible amount of incompetence. But more importantly, Mr. Chair, from the position that his his really his actions really would reflect that of uh, those of not having been ethical. First of all, in potentially lying to this committee. First of all, relative to the selection of GC strategies, he had indicated that his team had chosen GC strategies, whereas. His subordinates, both Mr. McDonald and Mr. Utano, were adamant that it was he himself who had made the selection of GC strategies. And second, relative to his promotion, he had indicated that he had gone through a significant uh, competition relative to receiving his position at Treasury Board. Anyone who has been through a public service substantive <laughs> process uh, can tell you uh, it is not something that is taken lightly and that there are many steps, much preparation and an effort to receive a substantive role within the public service and certainly one of that significance. Um, but his, his uh, colleagues, again, countered what he said. And in fact, he, in his testimony, uh, to our former NDP colleague here and and myself uh, gave differing information that he had in fact not received the position as a result of a substantive process but was chosen from it. Of course as well we have the issue of him uttering threats, uttering threats to Mr. McDonald uh, after Mr. Doan supposedly received a call from the then uh, Minister of Public Safety, uh, Mr. Mendicino, who I will add has not yet appeared at this committee and should have appeared at this committee by now relative to uh, a rise scam, but that uh, he, he apparently, according to Mr. McDonald, called Mr. McDonald at that time and threatened Mr. McDonald's career. So he has to come forward and account for that. This is just, this is not to be taken lightly, uttering threats such as this. And of course, as my colleague Ms. Mrs. Block had pointed out, the deletion of thousands of emails. We've all certainly uh, deleted an email now and then in error. Um, something that even deleting a, a single email brings about uh, much stress, much uh, concern, but deleting thousands of emails, which explains many administrative gaps, in fact, Mr. Chair. Um, and, but he denies this as well. So it's just evident that Mr. Doan is a significant part of the Arrive Scam scandal. It, it is, he is a piece of the puzzle. And most importantly, Mr. Chair, he must be held accountable for both his incompetence and his, his, uh, his unethical behavior. There comes a time, Mr. Chair, where everyone has to pay the piper, and Mr. Doan's time has arrived. And therefore, I support Mrs. Block's motion and hope my colleagues will agree that it is long past the time Mr. Doen come before this committee and explain his actions. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair.